iSARMS.com, the number one place to learn about SARMS online. Welcome everyone, Dylan Jamelli here today with a brand new video for you. So today I want to discuss with you early warning signs of gynecomastia. Now gynecomastia, we also call it gyno, this is every steroid user's worst nightmare. It is. It really is. Now, in short, it's a condition in which men develop breast tissue due to an overabundance of estrogen in their bodies. Okay. Now, although it's possible to, re you know, reverse the condition early, it may become permanent and require surgery if it's in an advanced stage. So I'm going to give you everything you need to know about gyno, including the early warning signs and how to prevent it in the first place. Now, let's just talk about understanding gynecomastia and why it happens. Some of this might seem like it's, you know, common sense to some of you, but to a lot of people, it's most certainly not. And you can't ever know too much. So I urge you to really, you know, listen to this. Some of the anabolic steroids out there that you know, most of us know this that are commonly used convert to estrogen, which is the female hormone that's responsible for many feminine characteristics, and that includes breast development. Now, just as women who use anabolic steroids are going to be prone to virilization and developing male attributes, men who use steroids may develop certain female characteristics. Gynecomastia is obviously one of the most common and the most bothersome. It's more common post-cycle when hormone levels kind of fluctuate and there's not enough testosterone to balance the estrogen in the body. Obviously, it can happen on cycle if you're not protecting yourself properly and you get a quick buildup. You know, and people tend to do this. They wait for signs and symptoms to start as opposed to preventing it too early. So the early warning signs. Now, fortunately, gynecomastia has several unique warning signs that can tell you it's time to take action or be very, very aware. Some men experience different symptoms to varying degrees that I'm going to describe to you. So nipple tenderness that starts out mild and becomes a lot worse over time. You're going to have itching in the nipple area, and some men actually report itchiness in their underarms as well. You're going to get a puffy appearance to the nipple. Sometimes they'll kind of seem kind of pointy or puffy out of nowhere. There could be the appearance of firm lumps under or around your nipple, and in some cases, you might actually have some mild lactation. For the most part, if you experience any of these symptoms, you need to take immediate action to prevent the condition from worsening, okay? The good news is that you can prevent gynecomastia from the outset and you can reverse it to a certain extent. Now, the number one way to prevent gynecomastia when you use steroids involves using an aromatase inhibitor like Arimidex or Aromacin, which I have stressed. I've actually made a video explaining why you need to use Aromacin or Arimidex from the onset and never let signs and symptoms even begin. These compounds are going to bind to the same receptor as an enzyme that's known as aromatase. Now that is directly responsible for the production of estrogen. When the aromatase cannot form a bond, the body cannot create estrogen. Without estrogen, there's no risk of gynecomastia. Most steroid cycles out there are going to call for 0.5 milligrams of Arimidex every other day or 12.5 milligrams every other day of Aromacin. Now, Aromacin, I've done comparisons. I'm not going to sit here and get into Aromacin versus Arimidex. All I'm going to tell you is this. Aromacin is a suicide inhibitor, while Arimidex mainly is more like a suppressor of estrogen, where aromacin is an actual suicide inhibitor which kills estrogen. Aromacin is going to be much stronger and for most it's, it's what you want to use. Some people are very, very, you know, they just have this response that, that they just don't get any estrogen buildup and aromacin is too much for them. That's generally not the case, but in some circumstances it is and then Arimidex is the better option. But they're both aromatase inhibitors, aromacin just being stronger. Now, if you fail to use an, an aromatase inhibitor during your steroid cycle and you notice the signs and symptoms that I just gave you, the, the products and the, the doses that I gave you to prevent gyno probably are not going to be enough to reverse the cycle. In cases like this, people are going to turn to letrozole, okay? And they take about 20 micrograms daily until the symptoms disappear, but some people will actually go up to 2.5 milligrams a day, which is a very high dose. And you need to be careful, but a lot of times it's necessary. People that do the 20 micrograms, they're easing into it, okay? 
But generally, a lot of people will kind of work their way up. And there's different protocols for Letro. You're, I could sit here and go over several of them. A lot of times I have people go, you know, like 0 0.5, 0 0.75, work their way up to 1.5, get all the way up to 2.5 and pyramid back down. But it depends on the severity. It depends on your response. I mean, there's so many issues that we would have to go through one-on-one. -on -one. But letrozole is definitely what, when it's in an elevated stage, that's what you go to. But you don't want to use it unless it's absolutely necessary. Okay. A lot of times in severe cases, you're going to have to get surgery to correct it. I've had to have it done. I had gyno just from puberty, not from steroid use, and nothing that I did could reverse it. And a lot of times people with pubertal gyno, that, that, that it's really a long shot. We, I've got protocols that involve Letro, Novadex, Raloxifen, followed by Aromacin that have worked, but it's not a guarantee, and I don't like to ever get people's hopes up. There's a chance, but I don't want you to, to bank on that chance, I guess, because I see it not work more than it does but i'm not saying it's not possible because i've seen it work several times as well i just don't take it as oh this is going to work okay i don't want to give anybody a false hope but there is a chance so if you if you have that situation email me i'll give you the protocols that i know that have worked now although gynecomastia is one of the most embarrassing situations you can find yourself in it is possible to prevent it and even reverse it in its early stages understanding the signs and symptoms is going to give you a really strong starting place and knowing what to do when they occur can prevent almost all of the most severe cases so that's the signs and symptoms of gynecomastia that's how to treat it that's what to look for email me if you've got any questions always get blood work to confirm because there are signs and symptoms that are similar of low and high estrogen but generally you do know when your estrogen is elevated but email me if you've got any questions whatsoever so dylan jamelli signing off isarms.com, the number one place to learn about SARMs online.